Okay. Um, welcome, everybody. This is the uh, Life After Barf Boff. Um, and for folks who are interested, I encourage you to come up and sit with us here because um, it's going to be a discussion and we'd love to have your input or your thoughts. So if you if you'd like, I'm not going to twist anyone's arm, but we have open seats. Um, and so Gunnar is going to be uh, uh, leading the discussion. Gunnar, okay, thanks. thanks. Well, I have some points here. I, I don't really know what, uh, what, uh, what is achievable with this uh, session. I hope we can get to something. Uh, well, I'll first just uh, state the status, although I know several of you are uh, already quite uh, aware of it. Uh, Pentabarf is the system we're uh, using to organize uh, DevConf since to, uh, 2007. It's a very complete, very well, wide-reaching uh, conference management system, which we have uh, uh, consistently hacked uh, beyond what, it, uh, what was uh, originally uh, part of it. So it has some good things. Uh, DevConf is, as far as I know, I, I mean, as, uh, as far as I've been to, the most complicated uh, conference uh, to run uh, because we keep uh, many f uh, we we use many factors that were th that are not usually uh, needed for our most conferences. For example, all this uh, uh, workflow about uh, rating uh, requests for uh, travel sponsorship uh, or uh, the assassins games or whatever that are tracked in Penta. So. Uh, right now, yeah, it's comple uh, completely unique to us. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the problem is that, uh, well, we've had uh, many arguments recently. Uh, we, have to, we tend to leak out of Penta because it's very hard to, uh, well, uh, to manage several details with it. Uh, we ended up using the wiki for many things that should be uh, able to be stored in a database in ways that would give, give us a richer set of information and uh, e uh, ideally e uh, 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 should be easier to use and to understand. Yep, the, the bad point uh, in Pentabarf is that it's very, uh, very, it, it has very low hackability. This means it's a pain uh, to work with. Uh, I see several people who have uh, touched it in the past and I think uh, nobody uh, in this room likes it or uh, or would uh, voluntarily want to work with it uh, more, th uh, more than what's uh, uh, needed. The thing is the logic of Penta is too twisted. There are many uh, points uh, uh, by, by which something can be defined. Uh, I have spent uh, yeah, 30 minutes uh, wondering at how does a string of text get to the, to the users. Uh, yes, and uh, the, the things are defined in very different uh, places all over. Uh, all over. Uh, uh, we were just uh, having an uh, argument because by fixing something yesterday, I broke something else. And well, uh, Ganev knows this uh, system better than uh, any of us here, but he couldn't attend and, and he cannot be like, uh, like uh, in charge of everything. So if only Ganev is able to understand the working of uh, Pentabarf, well, I, I think that's a weak point of the software. Uh, it's too complicated to install on a Debian system. Uh, uh, Ganef again outright told, uh, told me uh, and uh, told uh, also Vittoria when he tried to join that it was impossible, that we, we shouldn't even try. So we have access to one uh, test system called uh, Clitus and to uh, the live system called Skinner. Yeah, uh, but uh, I mean, I cannot do much work disconnected. I cannot test anything because I don't have a local install. Um, and yes, uh, the, the testing system is almost useless because it's on a very slow machine, so slow that, uh, that, that it takes ages to connect, it takes ages to do anything. So to be honest, uh, I do some very minor hacking on my computer and against all good practices, I do most work on the live instance. So if during DevCamp you have uh, periods uh, of uh, Penta pages giving you proxy errors, it was because it was restarting uh, my fault, and yeah, that's it. Um, then an important part of the, 
well, the complexity of it right now, uh, of, the, of its database uh, 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 status, is it's very uncomfortable to work because we, ha we have split things in many uh, different namespaces. Some of them are part of the original design, but for example, we have many tables called debconf.dc uh, uh, underscore something. Why? Because we wanted to keep the code base uh, synchronizable with uh, upstream. Well, upstream development died. So there's nothing to synchronize with, but we have a, a separated namespace which makes uh, things very tiresome to write and very error prone. And I am uh, an expert in committing errors. Uh, so, well, the thing is, uh, I, I propose this uh, both, so we, I mean, uh, we, we will quite likely end uh, a bit uh, earlier, uh, because I, I think there's not much discussion to the fact that uh, we need something different, uh, something new, something used elsewhere, something, but, uh, but, but we have to get, uh, get out of this uh, problem. I think strategy A leads nowhere, yeah, stop bitching, stay with Penta, love Penta. The only way we're keeping Penta is to train a monkey, because this monkey is out. <laughs> uh, uh, now, the, the, uh, the, we have valuable information in there. Six conferences, uh, which have all the attendees data, all the, co the events, which are each of the talks, and many information that surrounds it. Part of it is not very important, like, again, the scores of two years ago's uh, game of, Afa of assassins. Uh, okay, but uh, uh, the, uh, I mean, we uh, we were uh, suggested to take a look at something called Frab, which is uh, uh, used by some previous users of Penta and has a series of uh, logic to import from a, a live per a Penta Barf instance into Frab. Of course. It would only import the base uh, stuff, so the names of the people involved, uh, I mean the user accounts, the, the events, but it will not import anything that's uh, DevConf uh, specific, which is very important to us to keep. For example, we, we want the, the conference rate, the, the, uh, the travel sponsorship ratings, because uh, for following years, uh, we can refer to previous years' uh, information. So, uh, I think migrating completely to FRAV is not an option. We have to keep the Penta instance alive, and we have to, uh, I mean, uh, to keep information there, so, uh, so, so we can still look at the numbers uh, 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 with the stable URLs and uh, all the historic information. We could, on one, si on one hand, uh, pull everything, say, by a, a, a very permissive wget. We would have some problems uh, defining uh, private and, and uh, pri uh, public information. So I don't think it's uh, very likely, but uh, it could be done. And, uh, uh, well, uh, the, the other alternative that I tend to favor is just to keep Penta as it is right now, we will only have to provide a server to keep, uh, to keep running with uh, current uh, versions because it will not work with Wheezy because it depends on very uh, many Ruby intricacies which uh, are changing for Wheezy. Uh, and uh, install something new, something uh, from fresh. So, well, uh, this is basically what I had as a, a a structured uh, presentation. I'd like to know, well, uh, some input from you, uh, and I'll try to take notes here. Of course, this is uh, Gobi, so you can all connect and uh, el help me make this uh, into something more uh, uh, useful. Uh, so, uh, so, well, please tell me if, if any of you has any thoughts about this. Um, also, is anyone online on uh, hash debconf talkroom2? Okay. Are you are you willing to relay comments if people ask them to be relayed? Thanks. Maybe to start with the kind of boring bit about old data before we all um, rant about our own favorite conference systems. 
it would seem possible, not, I, mean, I agree in the short term, the most sensible thing is just to keep Penta running. Mm -hmm. It would seem like it might be possible to dump out some of the data from table levels fr from by doing queries which dump out a per user stuff we care about kind of thing um, and put that in some appropriately permissioned place so that we don't need so that we don't keep Penta going for 20 years or whatever. Um. Uh, I'd also like to ask the possibly heretical question of just how much we really need the vast majority of the data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of the data is completely unnecessary. For example, uh, bank account information is hasn't been used in Penta for mm -hmm. a while, but it still exists from years where it was used. Uh, and uh, certainly uh, most of the, uh, there's very little data we need, uh, and a lot of it has gotten out of date, like people's addresses. For example, if they last attended in 2007, for example, that's irrelevant. Uh, so I, I completely agree. The, uh, we only need a few specific things, and those of us like uh, Gunnar or me or anyone else who has done penta hacking in the past can figure out some way to export it if we go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I would be curious what other options there are independent of export from penta uh, for conference management software that we don't have to be the upstream for. Yeah, uh, well, uh, just to, on your specific point, I know that uh, bank information was purchased at some point. I don't know if it was uh, requested again later, I don't remember that. But, but I think, uh, yeah, uh, uh, what, what you suggest uh, uh, also ma makes sense uh, on a different uh, way. Uh, the thing is, I want to separate the problem of migrating to something else. I want to install something. And then somebody may have time at some point to, to take that out. Uh, but for example, we don't want to break the URLs that uh, are already pointing to our information. That can be, even if the data is, hard, is easy to get, it can be hard to, to get it in the right uh, structure. Yeah. Just to add maybe on the data we want to migrate away, um, we, we have lots of information about past talks, including slides, uh, I mean, we already have video elsewhere, but uh, I mean, keeping these slides and stuff for future reference still is interesting. Mm -hmm. We should just have, I mean, we, we can very well go to an, any other system, but there is valuable information that sh we should just not lose. In fact, one, one of the things I've uh, mentioned to potential sponsors is that, well, if you have your logo in our system, look, we have 11 years of uh, past conferences information there, so it has a uh, high permanence. Yeah, I think, I mean, there's basically two parts of the Penta stuff, which mm. also applies, in fact, when, we're talk when we start talking about possible replacements. One is the kind of what most conference software focus is focused on of dealing with talks and events, and that obviously we, need, we would need to have some, maybe in the longer term, some static dump of all the Penta information on the same URLs. The other part, which actually we spend a lot more time fussing about, is the per user data in there. And yeah, again, I mean, I agree, some of it is just not needed, and probably if you kept Penta running for a few years, dumped out information as you needed it, then after a couple of years, you can say, well, too bad. If we didn't need mm -hmm. it yet, then it's probably not needed. But some of the data that is there, we should actually be using more, and because it's in Penta and tricky to get old data, we don't at the moment. So even for things like travel sponsorship, I think there's been a fairly low usage of whatever happened in the past, partly because it's tricky to get it in Penta, and partly because it ends up being dumped into other things n that are not Penta because Penta is tricky to use. So even just having a dump of this stuff in a version control repository or whatever that was given to the appropriate people would probably actually mean more use rather than compared to the moment, rather than less. Just want, just want to mention, uh, relayed from IRC, uh, uh, from Eric, uh, I think Eric. Kinsky. Yeah, Eric. <laughs> uh, most, the most relevant historical stuff to preserve is the talk schedule, talk data, links to videos, et cetera, which could be exported to a static site mm -hmm. since it's never going to change again. And it's in Gabi, so you don't have to remember what I said. <laughs> well, uh, when, I, I think we're arguing about uh, how to export is something we can leave uh, for later. Uh, the thing is, we need to start acting as soon as possible on, on the replacement. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, that's uh, something that. We always start worrying about in March, but in March we cannot change the conference management system. 
so we have to do it early. Uh, the, the good thing is that next year we go to Switzerland, so everything is already planned. Uh, by the way, there's a planned ne network outage for Saturday. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, one thing that uh, Maury suggested also, I think we should uh, look into it. Uh, the number of workflows we currently handle, and that's a big part of this uh, mess, is very big. Maybe we should split in, into several linked systems. And the, the amount of information shared is very little. So, for example, if we take all the volunteers and video stuff and somebody works on it, we just have a single sign-on thing that also goes to attendance and goes to events, uh, I mean, receiving talks and receiving uh, papers to a different place. We will have many simpler solutions instead of one big one one big uh, solution? Uh, I'm not entirely sure that it ends up being simpler. Um, so, for example, the video team needs to have very, uh, they're, so they've got, <clears throat> the volunteers that they have are conference attendees, so they need to be hooked into the attendee system. They are working on the talks, and that means if the talks change, they need to be immediately updated. Um, so it's, if we're talking about splitting into separate systems, it seems like we're defining, we'd have to define a number of interfaces mm -hmm. that in practice, you know, I, I feel like we're going to need to run the same kind of complexity. Yeah, of course we have to, uh, we, we, we have to uh, really analyze this, uh, this problem. Yeah, I, um, uh, just to sort of explain where I'm coming from on that point maybe, um, I would rather that there is, exists some system out there that does everything we want. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> um, my point is more that I'm pretty skeptical that that's true, and I'm pretty skeptical that there is any system that does our registration part in a way that really fits with what we want, because I don't know of any other conference with a, mm -hmm. a tool which uses, is interested in using free software for their stuff, which is at all similar in their registration levels set part. I realize that it would be um, ugly to all of us as geeks to have two systems which don't interface as they should, but I also want, I, I am not yet convinced whether that ugliness is worse than the ugliness that results when we start hacking all our weird registration stuff mm -hmm. into someone's elegant existing system. Because right now we have what, uh, what, uh, what's in Penta and what's on the wiki. So we already are uh, having this overload. Yeah. Um. I tried to look into some of the alternative, but um, this week I have kind of a FRAP instance running, but it didn't get it to have a port that is actually accessible from the outside for others, but um, I hope to do that. But what I, that's not the point. The point is that uh, I saw in FRAP, as I looked at it, that it just does talk and nothing else. So no registration for participants. I guess that's true for others. Um, I had a short talk with Warlon about this, and he proposed we might try to adopt what they use for UDS, which seems not completely unreasonable um, if we manage to go over the political side of this. And um, yeah, yeah, it's somehow tied to Launchpad, but it was not at least not clear how much work it would be to rip out the launchpad part because he said it's just used for authentication. But I didn't look at the code at all. So, but we could investigate this too. There's a page if you um, do a Google search that has some uh, kind of a list of open source conference management systems. The only other option I found there that seemed somewhat reasonable to um, use was what uh, LinuxCon Australia uses. They have their own system and they might be somehow a bit similar to us. To which one, sorry? And LinuxCon AU. And um, this is also the only one that's written in Python. And the others are launch, the launch, the UDS one is also in Python, FRAP is in Ruby, and at least my Ruby knowledge is uh, Mm -hmm. non-existent. So I think if we go with FRAP, we really need someone that knows Ruby on Rails. Mm -hmm. 
or is willing to learn. Yeah, well, that, that was a point I was going to get to at, uh, later. Because, well, for example, I am a Ruby person. I am willing to learn uh, other stuff. I've never written Python. But I think we should uh, form a team to start, uh, to start hacking as early as possible. Jimmy. I found a list uh, from 2010, from May 2010, of conference, man conference management systems. I added the link further down in Gabi. Oh. Um, uh, there are three that it knows of in Python, including what Linux Conf AU uses. That's apparently called Zookeeper, with only two E's. Um, and there's also uh, Conman, which is used by the Utah Open Source Conference and Texas Linux Fest, and also um, ScaleReg, which is used by Scale, and there's a couple of other ones that you can see on that mm -hmm. link. Uh, so we could explore these if we need more options. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, uh, wait, because I have a question here from a long time ago. Uh, I think that whatever we do, what, one... Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Uh, uh, but uh, give to him later. Uh, the uh, one of one of the problems we've had with uh, Penta is uh, trying to keep in sync with uh, upstream development really slowed us down because we have to do all kinds of safeguards not to invade the upstream namespace. I think that whatever we choose, we will deviate. I know that sounds terrible uh, from a free software uh, user point of view, but I don't expect we can integrate. As, uh, maybe we can if we, s we find something uh, uh, truly modular. I understand your points, but uh, I think that having it modular really can, uh, can work well in that sense. Uh, but uh, let's see. Bueno, eh, solo en, en español, ¿verdad? Entiendo de que la base y el flujo de información de Penta ya está ahí. Está I understand the, para consulta. the base and the information flow of Penta is already there for query. Eh, el usuario interactúa por medio de un navegador web, así que es un formulario por HTTP. The user interacts by a web browser uh, through HTTP forms. Entonces, usted dijo de que, de que pasa y que pongan a otro. Entonces... Ubiquémonos en ese escenario. So, uh, well, okay. Uh, he said, I, I said that, uh, okay, we can migrate to something uh, different. Eh, la nueva persona va a tener que asumir las nuevas tareas. The new person has to assume the new tasks. Pero conservando lo que usted hace. But keeping what we are currently doing. Una tarea a la vez, se la delega a él, ya no la hace usted. Eh, we delegate one task at a time instead of doing it ourselves. New users eh, will not register in Penta anymore, but in a new system. So Penta gets a flag that that information is no longer to be used, eh, but the other, the new one. Es lento el proceso, pero it's, it it may be hacer. a slow process. No. Eh, en inglés si ¿sí te puedo responder o oh. okay este eh, no eh, eh, the penta penta could be just frozen and forget about it no new users there no new information there we will start uh, start with something fresh and uh, we will not care about it so what is already in penta stays in penta as it is I, at least from my point of view. Maybe one, one other thing to add is that um, I think that everything that is user related is in the end a list of fields with specifics. And I think that's probably the easiest part mm -hmm. of Penta. Even if you can add travels, sponsorship, blah, 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 etc. It's still a set of user fields that has to be expandable with specific formats and stuff. The tricky things is the video management, the talks, the assigning roles to talks and reschedule talks, assigning that to rooms and stuff. And I mean, if we need another system to just care about the user uh, content, then just, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah I'm just to maybe repeating myself, but the, the bit that we have problems with at the moment is not really the talk system. And I think, I, I agree it's sensible to go to a, a new talk system that's more up to date, that's maintained preferably, and I would, I would still have a hope if we did, I agree, I, or to put it a different way, I agree with Gunnar's point, if we are trying to, if we do try to do everything in one system, we will doubtless need to fork it 
and fa effectively maintain our own system. My, again, my point on the kind of, well, I think modularity is, is, a, is too fancy a word for what I'm suggesting. I'm just, I was only suggesting having more than one system. Um, but if we did do that, then there, I would be more optimistic that we wouldn't need to fork the individual components, that we could find something that does what mm -hmm. we want. Even, I mean, it's possible for the registration part, we would actually just end up taking a standard ask users questions tool and plugging in our registration questions. It doesn't need to be a conference management system as such. Um, but at the moment, the thing we have the, by far the most problem with in Penta is this dealing with user information and trying to get it actually given to us in a valid way with consistent choices by certain dates. And really, I don't think any system we find is, well, no system we find is going to be ready for what we want in that. Yeah, I just want to, to point out that uh, there's another one that is used by PyCon that is already handles the sponsorships and hotels and and the conference part is called Symposium. And it's obviously made in Python, so. I put it in Gabby again, the thing oh, isn't scrolling okay. down. Okay, so uh, from the group of people that are here that I know we are far for, from the whole universe, is anybody interested in hacking the new system? In first working what to start with, then probably uh, do part of the programming on it. Yeah, but uh, potentially interested in doing. Okay, so we have at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, I think the, the next step then would be maybe to open, uh, well, a mailing list to start uh, handling this uh, separately under the DevConf org. Uh, team should be quiet in the next few months anyway. Sorry? The team list should be quiet in the next few months anyway. Yes. It may be an there's a possible advantage to just using that list so that other people don't forget about this. Yeah, but uh, it will reach many people who are not interested in this. So uh, it will drive uh, su subscribers away. <laughs> uh, we, we can just uh, set up a list for this, I think. I do think that there's something to be said for having the people who are not working on Penta, but who have been working on other parts of the conference, be aware of some of the decisions that are being made. Right, so if we say, oh, actually, we're gonna slough off uh, front desk stuff, the front desk folks might wanna know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Ah. <laughs> You're being captured. <laughs> okay. And of course, a wiki page. Everybody needs a wiki page. <laughs> okay. So, um, I also, I, I, I feel, um, I think it's pretty clear that we do need to diverge, right, from any other, I, I, don't, I don't actually think there's any disagreement in this room that a standard conference system is not gonna suit our purposes, because mm -hmm. our conference is different from every other conference. Um, so, uh, but you know we're going to be building from free software components. We can. It's not like we're we're ditching. We don't think we need to feel bad about that, and and I and I, I think that we should approach it from a point of view of what can we what also can we contribute back and how can we build these interfaces in a way that is reusable for other people. Certainly, when I mentioned the divergence, I'm not at all worried that we're doing something unethical by that. It's purely that I worry about us requiring to always have people who are going to carry on maintaining this thing for DevCon if it's just a DevCon piece of code. Um, we'd have, we've had problems with that for Penta, and although there may be a more initial enthusiasm for a new system, in yep. another six years' time, it's well, probably back to the same problem. And there's, a, there's an important point in what you say regarding what uh, Gaudens uh, brought up. Well, we're building a large group, but when we decide, it, it, it's, it will be in Python. There, those who don't understand Python will be driven away. 
uh, or whatever language we choose or whatever infrastructure. So, but, but let's try to use a widely used infrastructure so we don't run out of programmers. So, and I also think we should try to avoid the not invented here trap. Yes. And um, I'm still hoping to find something that has kind of a plug-in infrastructure where we just could plug in our custom things and hope that the API doesn't change too much over time so we can upgrade to the next version mm. without rewriting everything. But that's wishful thinking at the moment. Yeah, just to kind of count, although I'm being still pretty skeptical on this, I, I should counter part of my point there, that part of, part of the issue is um, also about the UI of Penta. Mm -hmm a lot of the user issues, and a lot of our hacking has been to try and make the UI less terrible for people registering. So it's also plausible that if we start from a newer system, firstly, if it, as long as it has some flexibility and as long as the UI is not quite as bad, we may need to do less um, divergence, even for the user registration part anyway. One thing I wonder, though, with the team we just built is that it makes, I mean, it's made of many people that are already deeply involved in Debian and or in DebConf and that will have not a plenty of time on their hands. And the risk is that we just end up next year using Pentel again because the work was not sufficient. And maybe one thing we could also do is say, okay, well, this is the absolute thing we need and then everything that we can do in addition to this is just good if, we, if it's there on time. And maybe we just we should also say, well, if on the 31st of March we don't have anything that handles the video and the talks, then we just use Penta. And then we just stop the work because we have enough work for the ne next step conf. And yeah, but I think uh, I don't know. Th that leads us to pri prioritize in which, uh, which order will things be done. I think, for example, if we are uh, in December and we still don't have any code, well, we have to m m make the user registration and talk, uh, talk submission. In March, we could start doing the video. In fact, uh, the video controller, as it was used for the first time, was uh, written in two days during uh, the camp. So, uh, uh, so well, uh, we, we have to see the components and uh, prioritize them not only in importance, but also in when are they needed. The video controller is never used outside of conference dates. Um, I was thinking what he said about not having the other system ready for the next uh, mm -hmm. DevConf. That's a possibility, but I don't think we should dump the process just because it's not ready. I think we should keep working on it, and eventually, when it's ready and people is happy with the new system, just replace Penta. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and another point about the horribleness of the current system, which is not unique to Pentra at all, but is a thing to bet that we should think about for the future, is we have a lot of parts of the data have been done in different ways in different DevConfs. So mm -hmm. if you go into the admin interface, you s even for an individual field, you'll tend to see kind of 20 different um, out possibilities, we, we, each four or five of each, which we, we have used currently each year. three fields called day trip, day trip uh, option. They trip paid, they trip should pay. Yeah. Two of them are Boolean, one is a reference to an outside table. <laughs> and what I would <laughs> hope that we can try to do, well, what, is it, what would be important to do if we want to avoid this problem in the future would be to, in the same, once we've kind of settled down on a piece of code and so on, or in parallel with that, try to look at all the things that happened over the past N DevConfs and try to design a sensible scheme that would support all of those flows mm -hmm. without being, or a sufficient subset of them that we care about, so that, uh, because, I mean, just defining a single ideal thing won't work. We've got to have some flexibility there, but equally, I think if we supported most of what, like 80 or 90% of what's happened in the past few years, we could also try to be stricter in the future on not creating new variations on that and say, well, too bad. It's, mm -hmm. we've, we've man if we've run, managed to run and deb comps in this way, then you can probably run another one in that way. Okay, so I think we have uh, enough work in, in our hands. I think uh, it can be time to close the session. Uh, we still have. 
I think long term it would be nice to have the discussion continue on the mailing list, but I'm not sure if it wouldn't be better to have another meeting at, of those that um, showed interest here to have the possibility to do at least some decisions in person, because I think it would you be mean more... You IRC meeting? No, or here, in person. Here. So that would, I, th I just think it would be more efficient. Um, I also thought that w the, the session is not yet over. <laughs> We've got eight minutes. I think it would be really useful to come up with a list of things that we need next. So for example, mm -hmm. here's a list of the critical data that needs to be, that we need to care about. Or here's a list of how we think it could be broken down, or here's a list of the tasks that, it, that Pente is critical for, whereas not so critical tasks. Some kind of, I mean, and I'm not saying to actually answer all of those questions in, in eight minutes, but I'm, suggest, I'm, I'm suggesting that it would be good to come away from this saying, whoever is gonna work on this next, here are, here are some things that they could create, you know, documents that they could write up, analyses they could do. So if we can, I see we're already starting this, which is great. If we can uh, list in those eight minutes, list those requirements, I think one good thing to do would be to split up the task of evaluating any existing systems to use as a base. Uh, and then, you know, between now and a future session in person or on IRC, everyone look at whatever system they've been assigned to investigate and like email a report to some location about its suitability for us to use as a base in light of the requirements of DEPCON. Okay, it doesn't have to be email. Disclose a report in some location. And this type of list clearly needs some prioritization, of course. Of course, we're, uh, I was just dumping some ideas and some, somebody thought it was a good idea to dump ideas. From IRC, <laughs> from IRC Eric uh, just mentioned that Richard Darst's scripts are probably worth mentioning. Yes. We either need to preserve yes. those or keep that functionality somehow. Right. Ah, yeah, so very important is historical. Yeah, uh, one very good thing about Pentabarf that I've never managed to fully understand is that every transaction ever made to the database is logged. So we can f always find out when somebody did something. That's done via PostgreSQL triggers. Mm -hmm. It could be added to something else th without the application needing to know about it, mm -hmm. assuming it's in uh, PostgreSQL. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure anyone is suggesting to use MySQL, so. <laughs> But SQLite is very easy to set up. Then it's way too easy. <laughs> well, it scales so well. Mm. I mean, we have 200 users, not 200,000 users. I mean, it's not a high load system anyway. Yeah, but uh, Pentabarf currently runs with 17 instances, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Don't ask me why. I th but uh, yeah, some processes are slow, so some processes tie up a given instance for minutes. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure Christian would disagree. <laughs> Talk rating is both, uh, there's a rating for submissions, and then there's a rating for how the talks went. And I think those are very distinct mm -hmm. systems. You probably need to be. The distinct. second, by the way, is open already uh, for this year in Penta. So we can start rating uh, speakers on how the talks were. Uh, if we make interna internationalization a low priority, it will never happen. Either the system is designed to be internationalized or not. 
And don't forget that for this type of at least translations, we have several teams for almost all languages in Debian that would very that would be very happy to do the translation of the debconf yeah. or system whatever. One thing maybe that wasn't mentioned uh, that would be the advantage of having multiple systems is that despite the fact that we have to design interfaces and stuff, we might use something in Python for users because it's very suitable for this and something mm -hmm. in Ruby for video for whatever because it's more suitable for it. And then the interface can happen over database, tables, access, blah, 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 or whatever else. And it might be an advantage of having specific systems that are very suitable for users and a system that is very suitable for video and then having just a clear and clearly defined interface. So is any of you familiar wi with uh, how the Debian single sign-on system is designed? We may use something. Shibboleth? Yeah, I think it is um, Shibboleth. I'm not sure. But uh, I mean, we couldn't use the Debian single sign-on because no, then no, no. we couldn't have participants from outside of Debian. Of course. No, no, but using uh, another instance of... Uh, that seems like pretty big overhead but i would okay, be willing okay. to look i would be willing to look into the authentication system if because we decide I mean, to do that i so. i have written single sign on systems for web uh, complex uh, things they usually suck after a bit but uh, i mean what if uh, we do what you say um, uh, using different uh, bits of infra infrastructure per team which makes sense yeah sharing a database is a good way to do it and we only need the authentication or uh, whatever. Uh, I'm also not sure if you really need real single sign-on in the sense if you sign on to one application, you're actually signed in to the other one too, or if it's just enough to have the same login and password everywhere, synchronized. Yeah, well, I think it makes sense for something like Penta to have one user account that would be in the central part and a uh, flag it as active uh, for different tasks. Yeah. But, but, uh, but that's not single sign-on, that's just synchronized accounts, in my sense. No. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the time's out. So uh, just uh, following, it, do, do you think uh, we, we should have another live uh, meeting before DevConf's over? I, yeah. I kind of think it's a reasonable leader on one level, but also I'm, it depends if some people are actually going to have time to do anything before then, mm -hmm. which some of us are unlikely to, including mm -hmm. Gunnar. Yeah, but I, I, I'd love to ha have I some time for that. I think it's at least reasonable to just gather to see who has knowledge on what technologies, and mm -hmm. probably we can also together assess the systems existing, so looking through web pages, looking at the code, if it has like plugin infrastructure, what it does, and just assemble a list to have a start and to get to know each other. So mm -hmm. that's my idea. Okay. Okay, so... Uh, a, I propose we'll Thursday after everything at the pool. At the pool? At the pool. Thursday in the evening at the pool after dinner. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> after dinner. Thursday. Thursday. After dinner. Thank you very much.